I'm trying to shoot another video on the K-Jet system. And it's late in the day, and the only way I'm going to be able to pull this off is if I get my mojo. I don't have any mojo for K-Jet today. I think I'm ready. If you recall in the last video that I filmed on this F110 engine, I had tackled all the potential intake air leaks in and around the intake manifold and under the intake manifold, but there's one thing left to consider here, and that is the fuel injectors. You have to remember these fuel injectors can be a big source of air intake leaks. And they can be very subtle because maybe you only have a small leak on one, but when you combine it with six small leaks or eight small leaks on a V8, it can multiply to a big leak. So that's sometimes it's hard to determine if these are leaking, even if you spray some sort of cleaner around it while the engine's running. Now on the M110 engine, you have the bracket that holds the injector in place. You remove the hard lines and you remove the bracket then you can pull the injector out. I've already loosened this up, so it's going to not come out hard. And there you can see you have the sleeve seal right here. It's an all rubber seal. And then when you pull the injector holder out or the sleeve out, you have an O-ring right there. So you can see what happens if you have a damaged O-ring or a hardened or shrunk O-ring here or if this seal has hardened, which is the case on a lot of them, it will fit loosely in the sleeve. And if this is hardened to a point where it's collapsed, when you go to tighten it down here, you have too much play right there. And that's where the leaks can occur. So I'm going to take you over to the bench now and compare this with a new setup that I have ready to go into this engine. So I want to compare the old setup that came out of that engine with a new one. And you look at them and you say, well, this is obviously nicer looking. It's a lot cleaner. I don't think there was a problem with these O-rings because they're still soft, but there is a problem with this sleeve seal. And it's going to be hard to see in the video, but if you hold these together, I'll move the sleeve up. This seal is sitting higher than this old one, which means when we go to clamp it down, you're going to get a more solid seal because remember the sealing occurs right here, right along that edge. So if this is shrunk and it's hardened up over time, when you go to tighten this clamp down, it may not be pushing hard enough on this to get a complete seal. So what we've done for this engine is we've opted to just put in all new parts. You know, we have the new, the new sleeves, the, the new hole rings, the new seals, the new injectors. I was thinking I'm going to go ahead and put a kit together like this for the six cylinders and the V8. So it's just a complete kit. You can get the whole thing if you want to renew it. How do I know if I should replace these injectors? They're not cheap. Uh, they're currently not that expensive, but it, yeah. Got to remember this car we're dealing with here is 43 years old. And if you look at these injectors, they're looking kind of old. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take you over to the bench and we're going to put a couple of these old ones on my tester. And then we're going to compare it with a new one so you can see the difference in both the release and the spray pattern. But I thought it'd be interesting for you to see what's inside one of these. They are not repairable. They are not serviceable you have fuel come down through this long nozzle and right there's a filter. And that little filter can become a problem over time. You know, you might want to try to soak these in like a, a lacquer thinner or something. I found that the filters can become a problem. Also the spring weakens. There's a little nozzle right there and that spring will weaken up and that nozzle will stay open longer than it should. Remember, 
These injectors don't open and close like most injectors. They're constant, CIS, constant, continuous injection occurring. So these are spraying all the time. They're not opening and closing. It's very important. So when you see what I'm going to show you on the tester, you'll understand this is just a benchmark test, if I could say. It's not a real test. You'd have to put them on a Bosch multi-thousand dollar tester to get a comparison of the exact spray patterns. But let me take you over there now. We're going to show you what one of these old injector sprays like. We've got a couple that aren't performing very well, and then we're going to show you a new one. This is my pressure tester for diesel fuel injectors. There's a typical OM616617 diesel injector, and I've been able to modify this to test CIS injectors. The big change is in the pressure reading. If you notice, the gauge for the diesels goes all the way up to 3,000 PSI because a lot of these diesel injectors will release between 1,600 and 2,000 PSI, so you need a a gauge that can handle that kind of pressure, where the CIS injectors release around 50 to 60 PSI. So obviously I make this modification, I have to change the gauge and then I have to change the fittings and change this capture bottle. What I'm doing here is I'm spraying. This is paint thinner or mineral spirits that I'm spraying. You never spray gasoline. You can use kerosene, but when you're testing these injectors, never use gasoline, that's very dangerous. And this capture bottle is set up with a hose going outside. So as I spray, I'm atomizing all this paint thinner into this bottle and I'm not having to breathe it. So watch, we're going to pump this thing up. I'm going to close off the valve here and pump it up. Watch the gauge and then we'll zoom in and look at the spray pattern. Okay, it's releasing about you know, right there between 50 and 60 PSI, but it's jumping up there to about 100. Look at that. So it looks like it's binding a little bit. Now come down and take a look. Look at that spray. See, it's spraying off the side. And if you look, let's see, it's probably leaking. Let's see if it holds pressure. There we go. Look at the gauge. Let's do that again. See, it's leaking right down. So the, now check the drip here. I think you can see it dripping. All right, as it leaks down, see if it can, you can see a drip. Yeah, there's a drip. So that's what you call a bad CAS fuel injector. Now let's install a new one and see how that looks. Okay, you can see I have the new Bosch fuel injector installed in the capture bottle. And we're ready to test this. Notice the color of the fluid. That sure doesn't look like mineral spirits to me. <laughs> well, I want you to know I add a little bit of automatic transmission fluid, a small amount in with this test fluid or cleaner to help lubricate the seals in the pump. So I've closed the valve down on the pump, watch the gauge, and you're going to hear something very interesting when that injector starts firing. Okay, you're going to bring it up over 40. It's approaching 50. Listen and look. Come right down here. Look at that spray pattern. See how it's atomizing? And listen to the squeak. So in reality, this is running all the time, so you'd have to pump real fast like that, see? But look at the atomization of that. Now come back up to the gauge, and you can see it's... It's firing between 40 and the high 50s. Now I'm going to stop at 40. It's going to leak down a little bit because of air in the system, and then it should stabilize. And there you have it. You're going to maybe see a very small amount, but take a look at the tip. See, it's holding pressure, and there's no fuel leaking out of that tip of that injector. I'm sure some of you are thinking, well, why can't I use the old injectors? Well, you can if you can test them and they spray well and they hold pressure. What happens is these get all gummed up over time, particularly if the engines don't run, the fillers get gummed up. And what I found is you can put these on this tester and pump about 50 to 100 times and eventually they'll start to clean themselves out and they'll start to spray pretty well. So what I want to do here is show you one right now that's real bad. 
There's no way you're going to save this one. Watch. <laughs> Can you believe that? Can you imagine that spraying all the time? If some of you are wondering why you have a lousy smelling exhaust and are burning all kinds of fuel, it might be that your injectors are spraying like that. Look, it's not even building any pressure here. So this one's really bad. All right, now I'm going to put one back in that's actually tested pretty well. Now I have one of those used injectors installed here on the tester, and we ran this through the cleaning process. <laughs> you know, it's, it's a lot of work and wear your arm out, but you just keep pump, 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 and run that cleaner through to really clean out the filter and the tip. Now let's see how this one tests. Watch and listen. Now if you look, it's spraying pretty well, but notice the center cone is a little thicker and it's not as fine mist as the new one we tested. And if this one's also firing up here, you know, a little bit lower, that means the spring's probably weak. This one would be releasing around 40 PSI, which is gonna make a little bit of difference in performance. But when you multiply this by six and you're going to increase fuel consumption and poor acceleration or whatever, it's probably worth putting in new fuel injectors unless these are testing really well. Now we're back working on Fritz. For those of you who haven't tuned in before, this car's name is Fritz. And because the previous owner told me it was always on the Fritz. With these K-Jet problems we've been experiencing, I can see why she called it Fritz. And I'm getting ready to install the new injectors with the new seals and holders. But I also want to point out, if you look at what I've done here with the fuel distributor and the injector holes and the fuel lines and these other holes, I've used silicone plugs and silicone caps, and I've decided I'm going to actually include a set of all these in the fuel injector reseal kits and the fuel injector install kits for these gas engines because it's a really good idea that you keep these plugged up. Don't let any dirt get into the engine or get into the fuel distributor here. Now, what I've learned is sometimes these new ones are hard to install. They go in real hard. This just snaps in like that. So what I've learned is just put a light coat of engine oil. Don't use silicone. Don't use grease. Just a light coat of engine oil on the O-ring and then it should snap in like this. Two fingers into place, okay? Now I'm going to take an injector, put the sleeve seal on it. This also, if you just put a light film of oil on the fuel injector, this will help this slide right in here because it's a tight fit. Okay, then this comes all the way up until it drops into that notch and then just sits right in place. That doesn't lock in because you're going to put that plate on top and tighten that down and that'll seal the sleeve seal against that holder. So we're going to go ahead and get all these injectors in and we'll come back in the next scene and fire this up. Won't do anything else. All we've done is chase down intake air leaks and then we're going to start this up and we'll see if it makes any kind of improvement at all. <laughs> 